So, Mabuhay Squad, check out this amazing new trick that we learned. Ready, Ligaya? Here we go. Okay, it goes like this. Let's see if she'll let me do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it again, remember? Our trick, our trick. Wait, 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 wait. See that? Good girl! All right! Yes, good girl! Yes! Mm-hmm! See my boy squad? You can just kind of lay on my hand like that. Isn't that amazing? Oh yes, that's so cool! Thank you for letting me do that. Actually, I had learned that trick from Wings and Paws. <laughs> yes! You did the lying on the back trick. Okay, now you can go back. You can go back and play. Isn't that so cool? Wow, wow, wow! Good morning, Mabuhay Squad. Yes, ooh. Yeah, the guy uh, is quite vocal on this walk this morning. Mm -hmm. She flew to me um, while I was working and I checked the clock. It was 11 a.m. or almost 11. She decided to go on her walk late today. Mm -hmm. But the sun is still so nice. Yes. Nice, right? And just from looking at her, I feel like she's losing weight, which is good because I felt like she was putting on the pounds from all the formula she was eating. I want you to be nice and lean, the guys. You have to be proper body weight for your age. When we get back, we'll have lunch. You'll have that great, yummy fruit smoothie, fruit and veggie smoothie, and pellet smoothie, and sprouted seeds and beans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was thinking, last night, Arj and I were talking, right? And somehow we got onto the topic of being balanced, right? I guess the word would be being ordinate, if you guys know what that word means. And RJ is super balanced. Oh, I remember how we got on this topic. We were discussing the prospect of possibly getting a dog, um, which I talked about in a vlog back. Uh, and I felt like a dog would be beneficial for the Mabuhay Squad farm, right? One, because first of all, I love dogs. Always grew up with them. Actually, moving to the Philippines was my first period of life where I haven't been around dogs. But also, other than improving mood and quality of life and all that, I felt like a dog would be good for security. Did you just poo? Oh my gosh. She pooed on me. And it's the fruit smoothie poo. Sorry guys, I guess this is all part of being a bird owner. I think if the older she gets, the more controlled she'll be at aiming so that it doesn't get on me. Or at least this is my hopeful thinking. I don't mind. Bird poo does not smell, guys. It does not, and I'm not even kidding. Well, sorry, parrot poo. Have you smelled chicken poo before? OMG, it's the worst. Next to cat poo. All right, anyways, as I was saying, dogs would be great for security, I find. Um, I remember in my neighborhood, the only time I ever heard of someone being, well, robbed, was a house just down the street. This is in Toronto. And lo and behold, they were one of the few houses that didn't have a dog. Uh, so you know what I mean? Like, I feel like having a dog would be good. Just, they're, they're always on watch. They can hear the slightest noise. Anyone who comes up to the door, they're already barking. You know what I mean? So we started talking about getting a dog and then we were looking into breeds, right? First of all, so funny because RJ thinks he knows what being around a dog is like. He's like, I want a dog that's behaved and doesn't shed. I'm like, RJ, all dogs shed and all dogs go through a phase in the first three years where they're like destroying everything and they're like super energetic. He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, the dogs that I grew up with in the province, not like that. I'm like, RJ, the dogs you grew up with in the province are like street dogs. Those are different. They have a totally different culture. You know what I mean? The Aspins, as they call them here. Or Asoncalie. Um, 
I said no, RJ. Like, if you're gonna get, if we're gonna get a legit dog, like you know, either a mixed breed or a pure breed, we have to be prepared to like really spend time at like culturing the dog, just like I am with Legaya. You gotta culture the dog. You gotta teach it the rules. You gotta train it. He's like, no, trust me. I'm gonna get a dog that's behaved. And he was saying that I. And then this is how we got to the topic. He was saying that me with Legaya. I am OA, as they, as they say here in the Philippines. I'm overacting. Like, in other words, I am too obsessed and too extreme with how I take care of Ligaya. Um, and that got us into another conversation about how, in his opinion, I'm too much with everything. Whenever I become obsessed with something, I go overboard and that I'm not balanced. So, this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Do you guys think balance is good? Because in my opinion, yes, balance is good in some cases, but in a lot of ways, being almost OA or obsessive over things that I'm passionate about has brought me to where I am today. Now hear me out guys, Mbohe Squad. For example, I look back at my singing career, right? Now no one in my family sings really, like I wasn't brought up in a, in a family musician environment you know what i mean i just happen to love singing i don't think it was in my genes to become a musician but i loved it so much and obsessed so much about singing and becoming an entertainer that i would spend literally four five six hours just singing you can ask my mom my dad my brother they know singing on the top of my lungs every single day to the wee hours of the night my house was never quiet it was always full of my singing and in those years of me noise polluting my house i slowly and eventually developed my craft as a musician and as a vocalist and as a singer so i felt like in that sense being obsessive over something that i loved was beneficial to me because I put in the hours to develop my craft you know what I'm saying at first I sounded like crap but eventually I started to become okay and it eventually led me to joining Canadian Idol and placing eighth and you know what I mean so in that case being obsessive and imbalanced worked for me and I find that goes for everything like it's, it's almost stupid how many hours I spend sitting in front of a computer video editing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And back when I didn't even have anything. I didn't have in that many subscribers. It was stupid how much time I was putting into video editing. Another example. Ants Canada. My dad saw how obsessed I was with ants. And he saw like the hours i was like watching ants and making ant farms and he even he said he's like michael aren't you a little too old to be playing with bugs i'm like no you know i was i was always that ex obsessive kid to like escape the world work on something like work stupidly 110 percent of my focus on it and then come back to the world and say guys look at what i've been working on this is it um, and so, yeah, I guess it's always been part of my personality to be obsessive and OA and to be extreme in everything that I love to do. Um, but it has helped me. It has helped me stand up above my competition, to, to rise above the rest, to, I guess, like, get noticed, right? To create work that, um people like and is exceptional you know what i'm saying like if you see some of my videos um some of you guys can feel that it's i've spent hours on it you know what i mean and this goes f for anything i feel like if you're an athlete you know a, an olympian or say you're a doctor or or a lawyer like you kind of have to obsess and be imbalanced to achieve those statuses, I guess. You know what I'm saying? To achieve those hallmarks, you kind of need to be OA. Because if, if it was so easy and was easy to do, then everybody would be a doctor and everybody would be a lawyer. Everyone would be 
a, a YouTube influencer. You know what I'm saying? So this is why in my case, I feel like in a lot of circumstances to achieve greatness, you have to be OA. <laughs> you have to be extreme. Greatness is achieved with those who are extreme. You know what I mean? I don't know, that's just my, that's just my experience in life. What do you guys think? So going back to RJ, RJ is extremely balanced. Like, he would never obsess over any animal the same way I do with my ants and with Ligaya. If he were to get a dog, which he says will be his and not mine, fine. Uh, <laughs> I already know this dog will run RJ to the ground. He won't know what hit him. <laughs> he thinks this dog will behave. No. All you dog owners out there, you know what I'm talking about. This dog will run RJ to the ground. So anyways, balance is the topic. What do you guys think? How important is balance? Of course you need to also have balance. You can't just be 100% extreme in life. Which is why I'm so grateful that I have RJ to balance me out. To pull me back when I'm too obsessed. Because right now he thinks I'm too obsessed with Ligaya. Which is true. But I mean it's like raising a child. You want to invest in the child. You want to give it your all, right? It also comes to show you how moderate RJ is because me I, I'm so extreme I want it all I want everything I want everything times 10 times 100 RJ just wants just enough of everything balanced balanced he doesn't like staying home too long wants to travel but doesn't want to travel too much also wants home time I just want it all I want it all everything how about you guys you out there, Mabuhai Squad, I'm curious. Are you guys like RJ? Extremely balanced? Nothing is too extreme. You don't like the extremes of anything. Just want a little bit of everything. Ordinance. Or are you like me? You want it all. Extreme. The things you love, you just want to do it for hours and hours and hours if you can. Mm -hmm. Like until it's logically stupid. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious. Parenting is extreme. There's nothing balanced about parenting at all. <laughs> Gotta deal with kids, hunk, cooking for them, house chores, like kids problems, and then wait till you hit the teens. My goodness, that's extreme. Right? Of course, there are drawbacks to being extreme. For example, addictive personality, coffee, and cheesecake. <sighs> And in my early 20s, other stuff. But let's not get into that. Now, speaking of dog breeds, some of the breeds we were looking into were Border Collie. It's lauded as the most intelligent of the dog breeds. Um, I particularly liked Border Collies because one, they're a great farm dog. And two, I think it would be good at like herding like, you know, rallying up our chickens and goats even, you know, in case they kind of are wandering around, we can get the dog to go round up our chickens and lead them into the coop. You know what I'm saying? Like it would be a working farm dog and border collies are totally awesome. The only drawback with them is they're so intelligent, just like Legaya is an intelligent parrot and they require extra work to train and keep like occupied you know what i'm saying like every day they need to be working and using their intelligence otherwise they become destructive any of you guys out there have any border collies do you think we could handle that i already know i already know rj would not be able to handle a border collie i'll end i'll end up being the one training it and then we were looking into Brittany. have you guys heard of this breed good reviews on this breed Friendly, great on the farm, um, intelligent, bright, <laughs> um, nice sized dog. But then we realized that, oh my goodness, the Brittany is used for hunting birds. So we can't. <laughs> Border Collies though are kind of, they're used to being around livestock. Yes, there is a danger that Ligaya might get hurt. Um, but from what I understand, the herding livestock dogs are, they're a different thing. You know what I mean? 
Um, of course, there would need to be strict, strict training uh, involved, no matter what dog we get. And then RJ started looking into like the lap dogs because apparently they're well natured. A lot of the lap dogs have like human hair, like hypoallergenic hair, um, which RJ likes. He doesn't like shedding. So, you know, like the lasso lapsos, the shih tzus, the shipus, the all those kind of dogs. Personally, although I love those dogs too, I just feel like in the farm when it's sometimes dirty and muddy and it getting in their hair, you know what I mean? And then also I'm thinking about like, are they okay around goats and stuff? <laughs> Can they round up a, like a, a herd of goats? I wonder. And then in my experience, I don't know, in my experience that is, Smaller dogs tend to be harder to housebreak for some reason. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not housebreaking them right, but I have found that the larger dogs are easier to housebreak to go outside and potty. All you dog experts out there, what breeds do you recommend? We were also looking into Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever, those staple dogs, obviously. So easy, apparently, to train. Um, so friendly. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of breeders out there uh, here in the Philippines. <laughs> we need a gargoyle to watch over our kingdom, Nikaya. The poo on my shirt, extreme. <laughs> so guys, remember how in yesterday's vlog, I got a new blender and I'm replacing her formula with this blended gruel. This morning, I thought this was like, more than enough. I thought I would have had to throw out a lot, but look, she's almost done. She ate so much of this today. And I was okay to feed her as much as she wanted of this because this was not formula. She wouldn't be getting an, a surplus of like fats and um, proteins, right? So uh, I'm happy she's loving this. She's gonna finish this tonight, I think. OMG, this bird is so demanding. She's OA. So extreme. You don't have balance, just like your dad. Seriously. Mm hmm. She loves this formula. And I mean, this homemade formula. <laughs> yes, it's good, right? Mm. Isn't it? I know, I agree. It's got all that kale and broccoli and carrot, right? And oops, and it's got like um, pellets in there, yeah. Sprouted almonds, sprouted mung bean. Mmm, so good for you. Yes. <laughs> it's good, right? You want more? Oh my gosh. You are seriously extreme. Now I also realize that a lot of this is water, but I'm just happy that she's getting a more balanced set of nutrients, you know what I mean? In this new blended food. And we're gonna blend your formula from now on until you are fully weaned. And that's it, that's all you get. Wasn't that yummy? Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what did you think of that performance, Ligaya? <laughs> Underwhelming, I think. All right, so RJ. What? Earlier today, I was talking to my boy squad mm -hmm. about our conversation about, well, first the dog. <laughs> Last night. Yeah, on breeds. And then also about, you know, being OA mm -hmm. and being balanced. Being overacting and being balanced. Yeah, Mikey tends to overdo, overdo things. He exaggerates. <laughs> Not <laughs> true! I mean, almost all the time. <laughs> okay, yes, it's true. Okay, so, RJ, I have a question for you. So, okay, 
So do you feel like I spend too much time with Ligaya? Yeah. RJ, do you feel I invest too much of my focus on Ligaya? Yes. <gasps> too much? Yeah. Like, it should be like less? OA, yeah. There should be balance. Oh, be careful. She's listening right there. <laughs> so then, RJ, would you say... What? And remember, Mabuhay Squad is listening. <laughs> That it was a mistake to get Ligaya. Well, uh, my boy squad, I think 